As the Roaring Twenties came to a close and Pi Kappa Phi celebrated its 25th anniversary, the stock market crashed and the nation spiraled into a financial crisis. Fraternity leaders resolved to protect the growing organization and solidify the future of Pi Kappa Phi in the wake of what would become the Great Depression. In fact, The 1929 Supreme Chapter was scaled back in order to reserve the organization's funds. However, Pi Kappa Phi still celebrated the founding of three new chapters at West Virginia, Tennessee, and Rensselaer in New York. The fraternity also introduced its new symbol, the Star Shield, for use as a member recognition badge. Founder Pelzer Wagoner made an appeal for strength during the heart of the Depression in the 1932 edition of The Star and Lamp. Wagner encouraged the men to remain steadfast as he penned an editorial entitled Ad Astra Per Aspera, Through Difficulties to the Stars. One such group of men that took Wagner's call to heart was the Alpha Delta chapter at Washington. Throughout the Depression, the brothers partnered with a handful of fraternities on campus to feed 50 destitute people each day. Pi Kappa Phi did not sit idly by during the Depression. In fact, in 1935, the fraternity absorbed Beta Psi fraternity, welcoming new brothers at the Illinois Institute of Technology and a group of men that would re-found the Upsilon chapter at Illinois. In 1936, delegates of the Supreme Chapter in Seattle unanimously voted to approve the creation of the White Diamond Brotherhood Guide and outlawed hazing and the practice of Hell Week. The issue of hazing had plagued fraternities since World War I, and the practice of inflicting mental or physical harm on future brothers greatly angered the living founders. On December 7, 1941, Japanese forces attacked the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor. The following day, the United States entered into World War II. Pi Kappa Phi members from across the country supported the war effort as our country defended freedom across the globe. Throughout the war, approximately 95% of Pi Kappa Phi members were active duty military with hundreds of brothers serving in battle theaters across the globe. With many chapters lying dormant and nearly all of Pi Kappa Phi's members engaged in military efforts, the national office was reduced to simply record-keeping duties, as Miss Laura Parker kept the doors of the national headquarters open in Richmond, Virginia. Pi Kappa Phi members owe Miss Parker a great deal of gratitude for maintaining the fraternity's records during the war. Many of Pi Kappa Phi's own leaders also made heroic gestures to keep the fraternity running. In fact, the entire National Council served seven-year terms as the fraternity could not gather to elect a new slate at Supreme Chapter. In 1945, as the United States celebrated victory, Pi Kappa Phi members began to focus on rebuilding the fraternity. Soon after the war, The National Headquarters hired Fred Quinn of the Sigma Chapter at South Carolina as the first traveling counselor, which would eventually become known as leadership consultants. A new executive secretary was also welcomed as Bernard Jones Jr. took the reins at the national office. In 1946, Pi Kappa Phi brothers across the country had something to celebrate as Alpha Alpha alumnus Wallace Butts coached the Georgia Bulldog football team to their second national championship. In October of 1947, Pi Kappa Phi ended its 12-year chartering drought with the installation of Alpha Chi at the University of Miami. Soon after the fraternity welcomed the Hurricanes, new groups were chartered at Indiana and Oregon. As the fraternity strived for post-war growth, Pi Kappa Phi was struck by a great loss. On August 11, 1948, National President Devereux D. Rice passed away after a prolonged illness. 
Brother Rice was only 50 years of age, and in his short term as national president, had brought much excitement and strong leadership to the national fraternity. To honor Rice's memory and dedication to the fraternity, alumni members Manuel Chick Cuveda, Eugene Dunaway, Frederick Grimm, and Philip Maloof pledged to raise $1,000 to begin a Pi Kappa Phi scholarship fund in his name. This small act of brotherly love is credited with sparking the creation of the Pi Kappa Phi Foundation. As the fraternity gathered once again in Charleston for Supreme Chapter in 1954, Pi Kappa Phi celebrated a successful recovery from the difficult years of the Great Depression and World War II. As part of the celebration, the fraternity marked 50 years of brotherhood with the dedication of a memorial clock at the College of Charleston. As members gathered to admire the new gift, it was clear that Pi Kappa Phi had made a lasting mark at the College of Charleston and in the lives of its members from across the country. Over the coming years, the fraternity would seek to grow that impact and strengthen the brotherhood.